So we're going to talk about man advantage, but before we get started, I just want to let everyone know that this video is going up today, uh, Friday, I believe. And uh, tomorrow at 5 p.m. Eastern, I will be hosting a tournament. I will be going live on Twitch, and I will be casting the matches. If you want to join the tournament, join the Discord and get a roll. And once you do that, just go to the Announcements tab, and you can sign up there. It's recommended that you get a group of five players together, so you're not, uh, you know, fucking around trying to get into a pre-made. So, Man Advantage on T side is very, very strong. And uh, man advantage on CT side is good too, but I would argue to say that it is better on the T side when you have man advantage. Uh, the argument can be said that it's much better for the T side to have man advantage, but I personally disagree with that. Uh, I'm not going to go into it too in depth uh, on the argument on that, but uh, in my opinion personally, T side man advantage is stronger solely for the fact that on maps like uh, Haven in specific, which is why we're playing on this map, is because when you have five players, you're always going to have two players at one area in this map, right? Like, uh, so on A site, you might have two players here, you might have two players B, you might have two players C. You usually won't have two in garage unless you have one playing from doorway and one playing from window. Uh, so the reason why man advantage is so impactful, especially when you're on T side, if you get a pick on the T side, and there are four counter terrorists or four defenders left alive, that forces them to immediately adjust and move their defenses around. So if we're looking at, uh, let's say that they have two playing on B site, right? And you get a pick towards either A site or C site, they instantly have to react to that because that was your solo player on C, right? Either the garage player has to move straight to C or the B player has to move straight to C. Uh, thus leaving it a one person stack on each part of the each part of the map right so you are forcing their hand into spreading their defenses thin picks in general are very strong on maps like this because you know that a lot of the times they can only really have one per area and uh, you can force a lot of rotates by doing this so if you get a pick on a it's uh it's pretty safe to say that if there is a solo player here, which a lot of the times people solo A, if you happen to get this pick, they're going to instantly start rotating players over. Uh, they're just going to start shifting players. They might leave C and have this garage player playing garage and C alone, just kind of watching both angles. You know, he plays on C, he watches garage, and the B player then has to deal with, you know, watching mid and being careful about garage, right? Well, the other two players go to rotate towards A because they don't know what's going on on A and they don't know if you guys are in yet. So they might want to actually get over there with two players just to be able to actually stop a potential push. So this is the power of having man advantage on the attacker side, right? You're spreading their defenses thin, you're forcing them to react, and you're potentially drawing rotates on maps like this specifically. Uh, on maps like Bind, where it's usually a 3-2 setup, where it's always pretty much a 3-2 setup, uh, it's not as impactful to have man advantage on that map. But it's still very strong because then again, it's it then comes down to a 2-2, right? Uh, unless the Cypher is soloing beat, right? Uh, then they can set it up a 3 versus 1 or however, the, however, the, however they see fit, right? So you don't want to overextend once you have obtained man advantage on the terrorist side. Because once you actually have that man advantage, they are reacting very quickly to actually, you know, cover up the holes in their defense. So you guys need to either make a very, uh, very smart decision, right? to either push in instantly off that pick, right? You get the pick, y'all are grouped up already ready to push. But if you don't have enough time to group up and push, like say you guys are defaulting and you're spread all around the map, if you get a pick, it's not as impactful. Like it's still an impactful pick, right? But you can't instantly capitalize off that. So if you get a pick A long and you guys are like, okay, let's go A long, but you take like 20 seconds, it's pointless because once you all group up towards a long you have officially you know given them all this area of the map and if they decide to make a risky play they could push in behind you so it's just you have to be very aware of what's going on around the map in these situations if you don't have enough time to actually capitalize on that pick don't do it wait for your team wait until you decide to do something and just play for another pick or group up and hit something as a team and get ready now on counter terrorist side once you get a pick it is extremely impactful on this side as well because once again you are a, it is a 5v4 and uh a lot of the times the attacking team will decide to from there just try and play for picks for a bit longer and then the time is slowly wearing down they're down that set of utility they're down that player and they have to actually just kind of spread out and play for picks and your goal on the defender side once you get that opening pick right it's a five versus four your goal is to not give them anything 
right? You don't want to give them any free picks. You don't need to give them any free picks because that's what they're going to be waiting for. They're going to wait for one of you guys to make a mistake and push in where you don't need to be pushed in. And that's how I see so many rounds lost. People will get the man advantage and they'll throw it away because they decide to overextend and they will get picked. So it's very important on the defender side that once you have that man advantage established, that you don't bring it back down to a 4v4 for no reason. Now, if you get rushed down on a site and you get killed, that's a completely different, like, that's completely different, right? But at the same time, you don't need to be giving them anything free. You don't need to be peeking this angle. Once you get that pick, you can hold from here, but it is also very smart to just fall back to site. You have that pick, right? You can just play here and wait. You can wait for sound, you can hold this area, you can jump spot here, you know, just wait for rotates. It's completely pointless to just throw away man advantage for absolutely no reason at all. I see it so much, and, you know, it kind of makes me mad, because we'd be playing this game, right? And we get a pick, and my team's like, okay, epic, dude, I want more kills, so they push in and they fucking die. Please stop doing that. That's all I wanted to say. It's a very quick video, very simple. And, uh, you know, there's not much to go into it, but man advantage is important and it should be treated, you know, very important. Like, once you have that man advantage, don't throw it away. Don't do anything stupid. You know, play it as a team. Play it smart. Play passive on the defense side and play very precisely on the attacker side.